Hello viewers, welcome back to my talk show. Today we are going to discuss on online screen time. Online screen time, how much is too much? With children's remaining indoor, the parental restriction on online screen time is all gone for a task. More virtual classes happening online. Children are hooked to TV, laptop or phone for the source of entertainment because they are not able to go out. We all worry that this could lead or have ill effects on our eye. Survey which was conducted by Times of India says there is 100% increase in online screen time ever since the first lockdown was implemented. The OLX survey says that 84% of parents have high anxiety regarding this online screen time and fear the ill effects on the eye and the health. So welcome ma'am, uh, today we are going to talk on online screen timing, here we have with us Dr. Vasumati Vedantam, she is a leading ophthalmologist and a chief doctor from Radha Trimitralaya. To go with her bio data, oh my god it is so big, I can go on and on, but to keep it very short and crisp, she has won 15 gold medals both on her UG level and her post graduation level. She was the best outgoing student both un during the MBBS and MD period and she has won Rakesh Ma Memorial Award for being the outstanding performing students in her college. She is a philanthropist, a very good Rotarian and she conducts a lot of free eye camps and there, uh, a project which I feel which is very close to my heart is called as a Bala Netra through her NGO to her trust. She screens people or children who are prematurely born from the government hospital every day and finds out and brings those children to a hospital and performs free laser surgery to them. So she has won several awards for her service to the society. Welcome ma'am. So today I am going to ask you some questions and how we can help our children and parents to combat this online session and with regards to online screen timing. So first I would like to ask you as what is your take on this online screen time and uh, what would you like to tell us? First of all, thank you Dr. Santosh Kumari for this wonderful uh, initiative and very happy to be part of this actually. And being a parent myself, I understand uh, you know, how uh, difficult it must be for all of us. Uh, we have been so careful about the screen time that we give our children and now it's like uh, uh, they are totally no free choice. now from our clutches. Yeah, so, yeah no choice. So, uh, you must be aware that the World Health Organization actually forbids us to give uh, any sort of digital device to a child less than one year of age till the fontanel is closed. Okay. And uh, from two to five years also, it uh, does not recommend more than one hour of digital time. Uh, and beyond five years also, uh, we have to be very careful about the uh, number of hours that the children use uh, the digital devices, preferably not more than uh, one to two hours per day. That's what it says. But uh, now the online classes have, uh, you know, uh, we really mm -hmm. cannot control and it's definitely we are looking at five to six or sometimes even ten hours if you include yes, the online very true, tuition and uh, uh, the coaching classes. So it's like literally about uh, 10 hours of digital time. So uh, the definitely the ideal would be one or two hours. But considering the circumstances, we are looking at about five to 10 hours of digital time. So how can we, you know, something this we cannot control because this is going to be the new norms for some period of time. I don't know how long, maybe three months, maybe six months. And we cannot really cut down on the screen time because that is what is the new norms as far as, you know, the cases come down and all. So how we can minimize the ill effect on eye at the same time continue to have online version of the classes, whatever they are doing, you know. Uh, it's a very relevant question actually. For computer professionals, what we do is we recommend what is called the 2020 rule. Uh, that is for every 20 minutes of digital work, they take a break for 20 seconds and look 20 feet away, preferably at something green. This is to defocus their eyes from the close uh, distance of uh, work. Uh, but that is not a practical scenario in uh, on, when, you, when it comes to online classes. When you're looking at each class, maybe 40 minutes to even one hour, depending on if children yeah. ask questions, it may extend up to one hour. So what we have come up with a solution is at least five to six minutes 
uh, they have to have a break after every hour of online class. They have to necessarily get up, take a stroll, walk around, see something else, you know, use the restroom, whatever. But they have to get up from that place every hour. They have to move physically as well as their eyes have to be defocused. So that would be a practical uh, solution for the uh, online classes. So once the class is over, parents should encourage that they walk out for some time, yes. you know, so that yes. they are at least going around and yes. they are not glitching on to the laptop for yeah. some time. That is the uh, very uh, valid takeaway because we cannot sometimes, you know, and when they are screening, they are looking to the screen for a very long time. They forget to blink sometimes because yes. they are so lost. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So the second is too important. Blinking okay. is so blinking. important to resurface the fresh uh, tears. So okay. they must click. So how can we early diagnose the symptoms of dry eye or you know the child has been having too much of screen time so they are you know what are the symptoms which as parents we can find out so that we can start an early intervention. So as parents we must be vigilant if the child has you know red eyes or they continuously scratch the eyes or basically complain of headache and they become moody, restless, irritable. In fact, irritability is one of the earliest signs of computer vision syndrome and digital toxicity in children because uh, they cannot, you know, really tell. We, we attribute it to teenage and, uh, and all that hormonal influences. But this is a very important thing which parents must look out for. And I would suggest that considering that online classes would be here to stay till for another uh, even five to six months, uh, then every parent should actually, uh, you know, ensure that the child does not need to wear glasses. Because even if there is a small cylindrical power, what may not be significant when it comes to uh, a school, you know, may become significant considering that the school is now in the house and uh, in front of the system. So that cylindrical power, if uncorrected, is going to disturb the child's, uh, you know, uh, vision. So just make sure that your child does not need to wear glasses by getting your child checked up once. And if in case your child needs to wear glasses, the child must wear the glasses necessarily whenever they use the computer. So the takeaway point is please note if your child is getting irritable very soon, very fast and throwing temper tantrums and you don't know the reason why this could be one of the effects that yes, yes. the screen time has increased for a very long time. And ma'am, as I was doing my research, I also came across this, your physical activity decreases your incidence of having myopia. Is it true or what is your take on it? Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, scientific research from Singapore and other Asian countries. In fact, Singapore has one of the highest incidence of, uh, you know, myopia in children uh, uh, in the world. Now, they, it, uh, Singapore and other Asian countries did a very good study, which was clearly proved that when children play for a longer time, you know, get exposed to sunlight and fresh air. The incidence of uh, uh, needing spectacles is definitely decreased. And they also have to sleep well. All is attributed to a hormone called the dopamine, which okay. actually, uh, uh, you know, um, regulates all this. And uh, it's definitely a scientific fact. In fact, we also encourage our children and tell the parents to decrease the screen time and encourage them to play outside. Very, very important. So, yeah. So now, see, because of the social distancing norm, we are not able to send the children out. Like, so yes. what would be an ideal solution? You know, if you have to increase the physical activity at the same time, they cannot go out. So in what way we can inculcate some physical activity in the home itself so that they can, you know, avoid the screen time or do some physically active, you know, it like an exercise or a dance or a game that will help them children. What is your take on it, that, ma'am? Terrace, terrace walking, terrace exercises. Okay. Plus, okay. in apartments, you have beautiful walking spaces. Right. Uh, and uh, even the streets, if you wear the cloth mask in the early morning or late evenings, there's not many uh, people around. The child can just walk in the same street. So, and yes, uh, also so. limit cycling. Okay. Limited cycling and street walking can be encouraged in children, yes. provided it is not crowded. Because that yes. will give another good thing, you know, that they are going out of the house. You do not have to restrict them always into yeah. the house. Encourage them stepping out a little bit of the house by like a little bit of walking, cycling into your street would encourage some physical activity. At the same time, it will reduce the stress in the children. Another point what I want to ask is, ma'am, as I was doing my research because I was very apprehensive with this online class and increase in screen time, I also came across the fact that there are something called as blue eye glasses which will which will help children to, you know, decrease the effect. Are they effective? Can we use it or do you recommend them? 
um, not exactly. They actually, basically, I think what you're reflect, uh, referring to are anti-reflective uh, yeah. lenses, which even computer professionals use in front of the system. Or there are special brands of lenses, which are blue blocking lenses, which block the blue light from the mobile and the computers. And uh, a simple thing what you can do is most of the computers and the mobiles nowadays have a blue light shield enabling option. So when you enable it, automatically when the computer gets switched on itself, it will tell you the blue light shield option is enabled. So that itself will cut off the harmful blue rays so which sort of dry the eyes and create allergy and all that so that this is a uh, very uh, interesting point man I, I wasn't aware that the computer screen itself comes with something called a blue right uh, filters blockade yeah yeah so the parents can uh, make use of the step that you have something yeah. in your computer which can block the blue rays effect on the child so you can switch it on and ma'am, one more thing, how far should the digital system be from your eye, like your mobile phone or your TV or your laptop, you know, how far should it be kept so that you can minimize the effect of uh, rays onto your eyes? Mobile phone about one feet distance, uh, one feet? Mobile okay. phone and uh, systems uh, 24 to 25 inches from your okay. eyes actually. And Very it's cool. very important that when you sit, the top of the monitor should be six inches below your eye level. That is, you have to see the monitor like this, not see like this. Like, not like that it, or not uh, like this. It should be uh, six it, inches it, below your eye it, level. Below the top of the monitor. So that, you know, okay. you know how I'm sitting like that. That should be okay. the posture. So, that is so the your idea. eye should be in uh, parallel to your screen or it should be something like looking down? Just a bit above. The top of the okay. monitor should be six okay. inches below your eye level. So okay. I will gently flex my neck and look down. Okay, so got it, got it. And even the way the child sits is very important to the chair. The backrest should support the child right from the hip to the shoulder blades. Preferably the small of the back should also be supported. And there should be a 90 degree angle between the thigh and the lower leg. And the feet should firmly rest on the ground. So that is yeah, very important. So this is a very very uh, valid point yes you have to sit erect with your uh, spine erect and your foot completely you know lying on the floor relaxed so that you're not straining your neck and putting extra strain on your eyes thank you so much ma'am another thing which would like i i would like to ask is can you give us some tips you know so that we can restrain the strain on the eyes you know or some home remedial tip Anything which you think as a parent we can encourage or you know. Definitely, definitely. I would encourage every child to do palming. Palming is you just rub your hands, palms together nicely. Up mm -hmm. your palms like this and close your eyes like this. Okay. No, like this. You can cross and then close your eyes. Yes. Okay. And cup your palms. Cup your palms okay. so that there's no pressure on the eyes. Yes, exactly. Ah, and okay. you can keep two pillows under okay. your elbows. Over Elbow. the table, over okay. yeah, over the table because you can't keep it like this. Your hands will pain. So okay, okay, okay. Table, you can keep two elbows, up okay. your palms, like okay. this. Cross over, close your eyes. Okay. And keep all the pillows over the table for about ten to twenty minutes. It's fantastic. It relaxes your eyes. Very simple eye. exercise. Yes. The very simple exercise. exercise. Yes, ma'am. Finish it off. Yeah, palming I feel is best because if you tell a child, you know, to do eye exercises like rolling your eyes this clockwise 10 times, anti-clockwise 10 times, what is all recommended in yoga, they will never do it. So yeah, at yeah, least palming, if you, can, <laughs> if you can convince them to do it, then actually when you do palming, you can feel the heat which emanates from the palm to the eyes, which sort of relaxes your eyes and prevents dryness. Yeah, because I see that the teachers, you know, when you have the preparatory session, they give some eye exercises, My, but my, my daughter eventually doesn't do it. So this could be a very, very useful tip, you know, just cross your eyes, put it over your eye and rest your elbow so that you, they can have a relaxed feeling. At the same time, the strain on the eye can be reduced. Very useful tip, ma'am. And uh, to quickly wrap up, you know, these are the point, five or seven pointers which they can take away home. That these are the things you can do. And if you feel that you have these symptoms, it is necessary for you to meet an ophthalmologist. It would be great, ma'am. See, point number one is now your classroom which is actually your bedroom of the child yeah so the lighting right. lighting should never be onto the child's eyes preferably suspended okay. from the ceiling the lighting should fall on the monitor and the workplace so that is a lighting okay. seating okay. a comfortable chair as i already told you supporting from the hip to the shoulder blades 
feet firmly on the ground, 90 degree angle. So that's how the seat should be. The table should be such that when the child places the monitor or the laptop in front, it should be at a distance of 24 inches and the top of the monitor should be six inches below the child's eye level. So these three are very important. If the child and the child needs to take at least five to six minute break every after every one hour of online class, take a stroll, go physically move about and defocus the eyes by looking into a distance. And also it is important that the child, if the child has any power, if it has been checked and the child is needing glasses, the child must compulsively wear the glasses. You know, when it is you, when he or she is using the system, it's very important. If the child has not been tested, then the parents, it's better that they get the child tested once because the online classes are here to stay for the next five to six months. And also an anti-reflective monitor, uh, either in the form of glasses for the anti-reflective glasses for the child or preferably in front of the monitor or the enabling of the blue light shield option, as I told you. And uh, these are the most important points. And lastly, the seventh point, last but not the least, whenever the child complains of any red eyes or you know irritability, mood swings, headache, anything which is out of the way, better to rule out a simple eye problem, you know, and digital strain before thinking of uh, you know anything big. Thank you so much, ma'am. You know, yeah, as a doctor, uh, as a doctor, I I got so much of takeaway from this. Uh, episode of you know how to help my children to have a better vision at the same time don't we cannot you know do anything about the online version of the line which is existing and since it is going to be there for at least six I mean I don't know maybe for six months this, these tips would definitely help parents and it has taken a lot of anxiety away from me and thank you so much for your time I know how busily you've be, been running the whole day today you know visiting uh, three hospitals you know to serve those underprivileged children Thank you again. It was a pleasure Thank to you. have you on our show, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Santosh. Take care of yourself also. Bye-bye. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye, ma'am. Have a good day Bye. and please stay safe. You too. Bye. Bye.